Oh boy. What would you say are the criticisms or weaknesses of barbell medicine from outsiders? <laughs> Thank you, whoever asked this question. Do you want to start? I selected this for you. Oh, from hey, hey thanks. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, well, I think I think outside of like any sort of personal differences, if people are like, I don't like Jordan, or if on the rare occasion somebody doesn't like Austin, you know, outside, save save for that because that's going to be a thing. Uh, I think the biggest criticism would be that they just disagree with our interpretation of the evidence, and to which we would say, well, great. Where's the the opposing evidence and how do you interpret that? And then usually that argument just kind of falls flat. Um, or there's just different belief systems in general and we can't agree that the sky is blue and so it's really difficult to actually have a discussion on the evidence. So that'd be like one area that we'd be criticized on. I think uh, also uh, it, it, we could be criticized for uh, maybe a lack of diversity amongst our coaching cadre and like who are members of Barbell Medicine. But as far as like other actual criticisms of our material and what we put out. I mean, in addition to us having extensive training and, and uh, fund of knowledge within the topics that we talk about, um, particularly in a confident manner, we also have a lot of experience here. So people can't be like, you guys don't even lift. And we're like, mm, can't really get us there. Yeah, it's like, lift a little bit. Yeah, and they're like, well, you don't even, you're not even aware of the science. We're like, yeah, kind of <laughs> kind of did that too. Um, so yeah, I think mostly it would just be like a personal either disagreement or um, some sort of like diversity kind of kind of thing. I think those would be, or maybe that uh, you know it'd be something minute. Uh, like for for example, like we're not putting out enough information on a particular topic that somebody else wants to know about, and I that's fair too. But there's just not that many of us. Uh, so, what do you think the criticisms would be? I think you kind of got it. One that I was thinking first, and so a lot of times when there are significant disagreements, um, or you know we get questions a lot. How do I change this person's mind? on something. And that can be problematic when the interaction between these two people, when the two people involved in the discussion or the disagreement or whatever the case is, do not share the same epistemology. And epistemology is like the sh a shared um, you know, way, uh, method of how can we come to a conclusion on this, ways of knowing things. Mm -hmm. And so there are people who basically, if you try to cite scientific evidence on something, they say, no, that's trash. Yeah, just and so it's like if we science. cannot have a shared basis of how we may even come to an understanding on something, they're not going to agree with us. We're probably not going to agree with them. I heard an interview recently between two folks separate from barbell medicine or anything else like that on a on a nutrition related topic, and one person was trying to cite some of the prospective cohort nutritional you know research on things, and the other guy's like, no, all nutrition science is trash. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, that is not going to ever come to a productive conclusion because they are talking past one another. There's no shared understanding of like, how can we come closer to the truth on yeah. this? Yeah. Or how can we come become less wrong? So if it's like, if you're not operating on the same level on that front, then you're never going to disagree. So I think that to the extent that people, as you said, might disagree with our interpretation of the evidence or something like that, it is probably going to come a fair amount of the time from people who say, I just don't trust the evidence or that evidence is trash or I don't use that to come to my conclusions. I trust my observational experience and I don't care what the research says because I don't mm. trust it or whatever the case is. And it's like, okay, yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, I think probably one of the original criticisms we got, uh, particularly when we left starting strength, was that we were just trying to overcomplicate things, making everything very, very nuanced and complicated. But I think if you take things away from this seminar, while there is a lot to know for like the fund of knowledge standpoint, what you actually end up doing in practice, whether it be in the medical clinic or in your gym or whatever, it, it really just kind of opens you up saying there are a lot of different options that a lot of different roads that all lead to Rome. You can pick many different exercises. You can pick many different rep schemes. There are many different dietary patterns that fit with the health promoting dietary pattern um, rather than just the one way. And so, uh, yes, it's less restrictive and less simple in that way because you have multiple choices to make, but it's also kind of easier, in our, my opinion, to do because you catch there, more people. And, and there are many yeah. different things to do. Yeah. I don't know. Anything else you think on this? I mean, it probably. Somebody in the comments, they're going to let us know. <laughs> oh, no. Here's why you guys Here's suck. Here's why you guys suck. <laughs> yeah.